Welcome back, Wizard Nation. I'm Joey Bonadonna, alongside head coach Corey Roberson. Welcome to the second episode of the Green Bay Blizzard Coaches Show. Uh, again, Joey Bonadonna, Coach Roberson. Coach, how you doing this week? Yeah, hey, you know, I'll always be better, but, you know, we I'm doing well. Uh, so, last week, unfortunately, lost first week of the season, but, you know, a lot of us are just happy indoor football is back. A lot of season ahead. Uh, you know, initial quick takeaways from, from last week. Quick takeaways. Uh, well, I'm glad everyone is happy that indoor football is back. Um, I would be, uh, <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would have been a lot happier with a win. So, um, takeaways from the game. Um, we, we, ups and downs, right? You know, it was a roller coaster that game. We started off good and um, we kind of flatlined and, and, and then we, we had some mental errors. We had some good plays. You know, we was all over the board. So, um, I think for us to, uh, we, we, in order for us to take the next step, we got to have some consistency. Yes. Um, and that's, that's on the positive side. So, um, you know, we, some good takeaways. Uh, quick start, the offense, I mean, you mentioned it right at the beginning. Uh, first play of, uh, from scrimmage of the season. I mean, you can't ask for a better start. One play, 11-yard touchdown from uh, Aaron Aiken to Keyshawn Taylor. Uh, go up 7 nothing. Um, they go up 7 nothing. Then Bismarck scores in their first drive. It looks like you're going to have a... Offensive shootout, but you know the defenses start to figure each other out. Uh, uh, the offense, uh, at least on our end, uh, slow the rest away. Only two offensive touchdowns uh, after that. But you know, what do you see, what did you see on Friday that could keep you know that early spurt of momentum going from you know, the first play of the game and just you know keep it going through all 60 minutes? Um, I think uh, you know it, we did get off to a great start. Uh, both offense. You know, got off to a good start or whatnot. Defense started figuring it out um, midway through the game. And then, you know, the sec I mean, it was, what, 13-13 at halftime. Um, and then, uh, you know, Bismarck made some plays. I think they quarterbacks uh, combined for 17 of 24, um, three Something touchdowns. Like so, uh, you know, the, they quarterbacks played well. They, they used two quarterbacks, so they did a great job um, keeping things underneath, um, exploiting our, our underneath uh coverage or whatnot, um, no, no big plays. Um, they just they kept it going. You know, we hit them in a lot of third down plays. I think from the defensive side, it's knowing how to capitalize on third down. Uh, we have to get off the field. Um, it, we hit them in third and long quite a few times, and, um, you know, they, they, they capitalized on a couple of over routes. Um, you know, and, and, and that's being more physical and, and aware of down and distance from our defense. On the offensive side, it's consistency, right? You know, we're looking for uh, the quarterback got to get rid of the ball a lot quicker. Um, receivers got to make some plays, um, you know, and that's really, really what it come down to um, is executing at a high level. Um, and, and we have to capitalize on third down. Um, we have to stay ahead of the chains. Um, first downs in this league, first downs equal touchdowns. So we have to uh, stay ahead of the chains and, and move the ball forward. So um, a couple of times, you know, we got behind, the, back, got behind the sticks and, you know, it was hard for us to, you know, get, get that first down. And you mentioned it, keeping the consistency uh, – you look at a point in the third quarter, uh, Mason Gray, Defensive Player of the Week, just announced today um, with two interceptions, a fumble recovery, and two defensive touchdowns. Uh, two touchdowns in a matter of uh, it was something like 15 seconds. Yeah. Uh, big, big game for Mason Gray there in the third quarter. Up by 12 points there. Uh, the, you talk about the defense, the, the youth. Uh, of this defense showed a lot of potential um, uh, guys that haven't played the indoor game though however you have a little bit of growing pains going from the outdoor to the indoor game uh, you know what can you what do you see in those young guys and their adjustment to the indoor game in the next 15 weeks 15 games I mean you know we go week by week right so um, you know it, it's getting better this week the young men um, I think we we wasn't as as aggressive as we wanted to be they first game out there, you know, they, they're under the lights, they're in the walls, uh, tight, confined areas. So it's a lot different. Eight-man football is different than outdoor football with 11-man um, on a 50-wide, 50 50-yards, 50 50, 55-yard uh, wide field. And um, so, so it's, it's a big difference, so the adjustment for them guys. So moving forward, um, you know, practice, getting these guys to be more uh, physical, um, not giving up ground a lot, you know, in, in this game, especially with the high motion. Uh, I think that's going to be key for us moving forward. Um, it's progression, right? You know what I mean? It's the process, you know, and, and that's, that's, what, that's what we're going for. Um, so where we go, I'm, of course, we're going to be a, a different team from now until week 15. We're going to keep these guys together as long as we can stay healthy. I think uh, good things are to come. And it's something I looked at. is similar to the 2019 team. Uh, a lot of those young guys in the secondary that 
didn't play the indoor game. You just started out, you know, showing those bright flashes, and then it, then they turn into the snow fly zone, the, the best defense in the IFL in 2019. Yeah, I, I definitely think that the potential is there. Uh, you're mentioning Mason Gray, uh, Corey Turner also. Uh, you saw him bring some big hits, uh, I believe. Yeah, nine total tackles, seven solos, two assists. Uh, a lot of definitely bright potential in that secondary. Uh, that I, I'm glad you as a – I'm hope, thinking that you as a former defensive back I love to have in your secondary. Yeah, no, no, it was uh, the recruiting process, right? You know, we were very intentional on, on the type of guys that we wanted to bring in um, in the secondary. Um, with Triggs leading the charge in that from the 2019 Defensive Rookie of the Year um, to uh, the young men that you talked about, um, uh, uh, Mason Gray, which was a late signee for us. Um, Malik Reeves, who, who who played very little, but um, he has some NFL background um, with the Pittsburgh Steelers and uh, Corey Turner, um, those guys, uh, uh, Mamadou Mbai, uh, you know, interchangeable safeties with them guys. So we, uh, you know, we were very intentional on what we wanted to do with the defense this year and um, the type of quality guys that we, we were bringing in. And um, it, it's, 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 you know, I work with them guys every day. So I'm in the secondary. I'm, I'm the secondary coach. Um, so I, you know, so I'm, I'm with them guys and. Um, from the first day that they came in on camp to see them now, you know, it's night and day. So I only can expect, you know, a growth to continue to happen, you know, week by week. So, uh, Another thing I want to mention on the defense today, Deshaun Taylor announcing his retirement, unfortunately. But, you know, he was an instrumental part of that 2019 defense. Uh, he was on the field week one. Uh, let's talk about uh, how he's left his impact on this organization over the last couple of years and, uh, linebacker behind him, uh, DeAndre Wallace, uh, linebacker. Um, yeah. You know, where where do you look going forward? Well, do, uh, <laughs> Wallace is, is next man up, right? You know, we professional, so it's next man up mentality. So uh, it's, it's going to be Wallace's job now. Um, Wallace, it's time for him to grow up and step into that role. Um, he wasn't too far behind um, DT. Um, DT, you know, what can we say about DT? He helped pave the way. Um, he's one of our pioneers who helped rebuild and uh, rebrand our, uh, our uh, football side of the things um, and, and get us back on track. So he is a pioneer. He's always going to be my linebacker. Um, you know, nothing but mad respect for, for DT. Um, he, and, and I wish him best of luck as he moved forward in his profession because he has a new love, right? And that's his business and his weight training and his passion for um, the fitness world. So um, I wish him nothing but greatness as he moved forward, and, and he's going to be great at anything that he does. So um, it, it's a huge blow to the organization, right, because he's, he, 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 you, you build a team from the middle, right, and he was our middle linebacker, um, and, and, and that's, that's a huge loss. But as I said before, it's um, next man up. Absolutely true, Dad. Um, going back to the offense, um, uh, Aaron Aiken, um, your quarterback, in start week one, um, he has that experience, uh, three years combined uh, in indoor experience. Um, you know, talk about what, what you see from him going forward uh, from what you saw in week one. And, uh, again, next 15 games, uh, what bright flashes you saw and uh, how, we, how he can build on it. Uh, yeah, no, no, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron is a, he's a veteran quarterback, right? He has three years experience. So we saw some, some, some good things, right? We saw some uncharacteristic things. Um, and we're looking for Aaron to make the adjustments that he need to make and, and um, you know, get better week by week. Um, so, you know, and, and, and Coach Barron to work with him and, and get those things um, um, solidified. And, and we also have another quarterback that wasn't able to play last week. Um, that we we are hopeful that we will be able to play you know this week as well. So um, you know we, we we take it week by week and we'll see where we at. So um, but as far as Aaron goes, we you know hopefully the corrections that we're going to make with him over the, the next few days comes before Sunday. Um, hopefully he's able to grasp that and and, and uh, move forward in a positive way. So um, you know we, we, it's a learning curve. So before we go ahead to our uh, preview of the Massachusetts Pirates, uh, let's open up to our. Our live audience here for questions, uh, if you've got them. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Good, good. How you good. doing, OG? Triple OG? Yowzer. Yowzer. Yowzers, baby, yowzers. Yeah, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, I have a question that I get asked 
a lot, and I'm not the expert on it. You kind of touched on recruiting tonight. When you start a season or as you go through the season, how do you obtain your players? Do you have a network? Do you have uh, some kind of a coaching service? Or how do you go about bringing in the, the players you get and, and excellent players, I might add? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, uh, the process is, I mean, it, sometimes it could be all over the board, but we try to uh, cone it in and, and, and make it, um, put the grid together and make, make it feasible for everyone to be able to read and, and understand. So we do have a gentleman in our scouting department um, who oversees our player personnel, um, Sam Hurst. He works from afar. Um, he, he's big into the drafts and stuff like that, so he does a lot of draft writings and rankings. Um, for, for guys, and then we also have uh, Zach Hibden um, with Athlete um, Scouting, Athlete uh, Scouting Services, um, who helps out. And we have various uh, other um, scouting departments. Um, one of the bigger ones, uh, besides the two gentlemen who I just named, is Scott Porter, um, who helps out a lot as well yes. um, with our uh, recruiting. He's been around, actually Scott has been around um, when I was a, a, a deep, uh, my first year as a position coach. Um, and he's been by our side, and when I became the head coach, he's, uh, he's been one of the guys who has helped us with this transition and getting players in. So um, the way we go about it, it's a long-winded process to even talk about. I try to shorten it up as much as I can in the, in the meantime. But, um, you know, guys send us players. Um, I evaluate every single player that, that we sign. Um, they, they, they kind of uh, um, filter through. Some of the gentlemen um, that send out their film, and then they, they present a lot of things to me. Um, the biggest thing is um, making sure that everyone play, is willing to play special teams. Um, I think that's a, a different mindset. You know that the special teams determines the type of character your your uh, uh, the type of team you're going to have moving forward. Um, we haven't been as uh, great on special teams in the years past, so this year we took a big emphasis in in, in special teams and guys willing to play special teams. Um, and um, conversations that we have with the young men, if they, they show any um, hesitation, because, you know, a lot of these men are coming from being the man on their team. So right. they don't have to play special teams like they did maybe their freshman year in college. Um, so, so we kind of we cipher through that um, and determine the type of guys that we want to bring in based on the attitude, character. Of course, they got to be able to play the game of football. Uh, which we're not teaching them the game of football, right? We're teaching them the indoor game. Um, and we're working on a lot of techniques um, to help them uh, move to the next level because this is not a uh, end all game for them. Everyone wants to move up. Uh, so the recruiting process is, you know, we go through our checks and balances, and that's a that's a part of it. But we have a lot of different people that's working in our corner um, and that's helping out, sending us players on a regular basis. And not to mention that the agents uh, that we have developed relationships with over the years. So. I think about when I started and I became the head coach, uh, when the transition happened in 2018 and then 2019 when I was named, uh, uh, when they took the interim off my name, um, I think we started that season with three players. Right. Three players returned from the, from the 2018 that I, I um, inherited, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think the rest is history, right? You know, so yes. so we, we, we keeping that foundation going. Just like Joey spoke about earlier, you know, with DT, DT was a part of that process with an agent sending us him, and it, actually we got a few players from that agent. So it's building those relationships. So I think it's it's about relationship building. You got to have the connections. Um, you got to show that you care. You have you genuinely care about the players, right. um, and it, it has to be genuine. You just don't don't do, don't talk the talk, right? You know what I mean. You got to walk the walk as well. So um, I think uh, uh, a lot of these young men see through the salesmen. So they they're not looking for a sales mm -hmm. job. They're looking for an opportunity that somebody really care about what they you know helping them develop. So sure. um, I think that's that's that plays a role in it. And relationships, man, relationship yeah. says a lot. So um, Green Bay has been a place. Um, like I said before in another recent I interview, Green Bay has to be a destination, um, and you have to want to be here. You know, we we don't have the the warm weather. We're in April going into May, and you know I I probably want to put on my winter coat right now. So. <laughs> Um, you know, <laughs> you know. So, so we have to make Green Bay a destination, and um, that starts with the, the the foundation that we started in 2019, and it's not to go backwards. Right. Okay. Thank you, Coach. You do a great job. Thank you very much for all you do. All right. Thank you. I know that was long-winded, but you got the logistics. I got it, man. All I right, got baby. it. <laughs> Anyone else out there? 
What's the current capacity of the uh, that you're allowing into the games? Um, the uh, rest center in Green Bay Blizzard has uh, come to an agreement. I think it's 3,500 right now. Um, that's based on Brown County and what Brown County is allowing. Um, yeah, the six feet uh, social distancing. So, so doing pods and stuff yep, like that? Pod seatings, yep, yep. And uh, I believe, yeah, pod seatings. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Coach, how you um, how's the health of the team going into this next game? Uh, I noticed that uh, after the game, I saw one player that wasn't dressed. He had a cast on his leg, and so. That's a great question. Um, thank you for asking. Uh, I mean, we're as healthy as we're going to be, I mean, given the state of the world um, with the pandemic and um, knowing that uh, the virus is still out there and, um, you know, it, we all are exposed at any given time. So um, we're dealing with that. We have, we have a few young men that's coming off of uh, uh, the COVID protocol and okay. um, that's tested negative multiple times now. And we have uh, some guys that's going on, you know, which is, which is a huge blow to it. So um, we, we, we are not at full capa- uh, strength right now. Um, and hopefully as we get through this uh, wave of COVID and injuries, um, there wasn't any major injuries. We had one guy, our running back, went down. He was our same running back in 2019. Um, but I think we, we've been hit by uh, the virus more than actual physical injuries right now. Do, do they need to be uh, vaccinated? Do you have anything that says your players have to be vaccinated or not? We don't have anything that says our players have to be vaccinated. Um, we leave that up to the player themselves to do their research, and um, it's their body. So we won't yeah. recommend each player or anyone to get vaccinated, I, I, we, you know, that's their choice. We leave that up to them. And if they want to get vaccinated, we have the resources, of course, you know, going through our medical provider as well as um, the other medical providers that are here in Green Bay um, to help these young men get vaccinated. Um, and, that, yeah, we just leave it as their choice. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Great questions. So we've got uh, four out of the first five games at home, and then we've got a road trip. So can you share with the fans what it's like to take a 10-hour-plus bus trip and what you guys do on these bus trips to, to keep things uh, sane? We make memories, baby. <laughs> um, I mean, for me as a 6'1", 220-pound guy, you know, it's, it's probably simple for me. You know, it's getting this little bucket seat in fall asleep and stretch out and all that stuff. For, but for our 6'5", 300-plus-pound guys, I, I, you know, it's a little difficult. So we try to make a couple of stops um, throughout the trip. You know, we got, we got uh, if it's a 10-hour bus ride, let's just say the Bismarck, 10-hour bus ride. So, you know, we'll probably go four hours, stop an hour, you know, go another four hours, then eat, you know, and then we got the two-hour, you know, rest of the way. Um, and we try to leave. We try to set it up where as though we're leaving at a decent hour. Uh, not 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 in a player's best interest, but in our best interest that we could get there at a, a decent time, that we could get the re- um, rest that we need the night before before the game. So, um, and then make sure that we're feeding them the night before as well. So, um, you know, we try to make a couple of stops. I think it's huge for the guys to get out and walk around and not be cooped up on a bus for ten straight hours. Um, I, I'm not six five, three hundred plus pounds to even know what that feels like. So, you know, I gotta be sensitive to that as well. If I were, if I was driving. We going. Straight no through? stop. No, 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 no potty breaks or none of that. We going. Boo. <laughs> can, can I ask one more? You can ask as many as you want. Uh, what I'd like to do is share a story. Okay. So I've been to a lot of Blizzard games, and Larry and Kathy Trinkler invited me to go on one of these long road trips with you guys. Do you remember the, the last game to uh, – to uh, Wichita Falls, Texas. Were you there on that game? 2017? Yeah. Yeah. So here's the story, and I'll explain it to everybody. We met at the apartment complex where all the players were were staying. We met at 1 a.m. We boarded a bus from Green Bay to Milwaukee where we caught a flight in Milwaukee. Uh, I think it was uh, Southwest Airlines at 6 in the morning, and we flew from Green Bay to St. Louis and then traded traded to a new flight from St. Louis to Dallas. 
We got to Dallas, and then we boarded a bus to Wichita Falls, Texas, another two-hour ride. From there, we got to the hotel that the Wichita Falls team set up for us, discovered horrible, <laughs> horrible hotel, bed bugs. Bed bugs. Remember Angie? Yeah, yeah. She it found bed terrible. bugs, and so we saw... 25 giant what? men Walking walk the from street. the Red Roof Inn to the, La to the La Quinta Inn, La Quinta, yes. two blocks away, with all of their, all of their uh, Bags, luggage yep. and stuff. Then we went from there to a bus to a, uh, like a, 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 a buffet of some kind to have dinner. And then after the game, we, we stayed that Again, at the La Quinta, we got up at 6 in the morning, took a bus to Dallas, and took the flight from Dallas all the way to Milwaukee, which was nice. Mm -hmm. And then another two-hour bus ride from Milwaukee back to Green Bay, where we got in about 5 or 6 in the evening on, on a, a Sunday night. So when you hear about the show, or NFL, and you hear about people complaining about a direct flight from Denver to Buffalo yeah. to play the, when the Broncos played the uh, the Bills and you you hear about guys carrying their bags and direct f to the hotel and stuff like that these guys pay more for just playing this game that you you can't believe how much they sacrifice just to play this game and for the fans, we appreciate everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mitch. Appreciate it. Air bump. There we go. All right, so I think Friday, the game, I think you guys were expecting to win. I mean, you know the Bucks improved, but I think you were expecting to get the win. So how are you able to keep the guys, like, level-headed and focused after losing a game you think you should have won? Starting off 0 one Yeah, every game we <laughs> we prepare for every game to win, right? Yeah. You know what I mean. So it, it, regardless of who, what the opponent or who the opponent is, it, I mean, you know, we got the defending champs, uh, Sioux Falls. If we play against them tomorrow, we, we expect to win that game. Yeah, you know, we professionals. So um, when you uh, when you lose a game that you expect to win, or you win a game that you, whatever, you know. Um, is, is, is getting back to watching the film. So you watch the film to see what, what didn't we do right. You know what I mean? Where, where did we make the mistakes at, and how can we get better from those mistakes and not to make the same mistake twice? I think, uh, you know, it's a saying out there that uh, um, disciplined players do smart things, undisciplined players do dumb things. Which one are we going to be moving forward? You know what I mean? Are we going to say, make the same mistake again because we just watched our mistakes? Are we going to continue to make those same mistakes? Or are we going to get better and move forward and not make those same mistakes and be more consistent doing great things? You know, so I think that's just the biggest thing is, is getting these young men to, to execute at a higher level, paying more attention to detail, staying focused. Thank you. All right, so to cap it off, um, we're going to talk about the Massachusetts Pirates uh, game this Sunday at 3.05 at the Rush Center uh, against the Massachusetts Pirates. Uh, the Pirates, they've got a couple of big names uh, in their wide receiver group. Um, uh, most NFL fans uh, know the names. Martavis Bryant, former Pittsburgh Steeler. Terrence Williams, former Dallas Cowboy. Uh, you know, those are you know, big names that pop out on their roster, but... I uh, got another guy that uh, had a big game against uh, Louisville in their win uh, was Thomas Owens. You know, we talked about the secondary a lot uh, coming into uh, coming into the episode. Um, uh, the receiving core of Massachusetts. How, how do you expect your secondary to uh, meet that task? Do what we do. No excuses. No explanations. Right. Um, Massachusetts is a good team. Um, they, this is their inaugural season, and they won their first game, and they won it pretty convincingly. Um, the talent speaks for itself. They're every bit of advertised on paper. Um, that's a good team, right? You know, and, and, and you know, we got to step up to the challenge and come to play. Um, I'm not going to um, sit here and downplay who they are and you know, what they're able to do, but I'm also not going to downplay who we are as well. Um, so, you know, it's going to, you know, we're looking forward to a good game and, you know, and, and let the best team win on.
Sunday night, and, 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 you know, of course we hope that's the Green Bay Blizzard, right? You know, so, uh, you know, Massachusetts is going to be a good team, and they, you know, they already got their taste of what the IFL is about, coming over from a different league. So, yeah, we'll see what, 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 what every, how we match up against, you know, what they are on, on paper. You know, that's why we play the game. Absolutely. Yeah, so, uh, again, uh, week two action uh, against the Massachusetts Pirates Green Bay Blizzard football uh, at the Rest Center 305 this Sunday. Uh, again, I'm Joey Bonadonna. That's head coach Cor Co Corey Roberson. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next episode. Woo!